Hi there. Um, I found your video by clicking on P. Joman's video and saw that it was a response. And I al always watch the response to videos before I watch the response. So I haven't actually watched his response yet. Um, and I totally know that he's going to totally own your ass because he's, he always does that. But there was one thing that, I, that struck me in your two videos about <laughs> the proof that God exists. Um, and that is um, the concept of probability of us having this earth. And <clears throat> I mean, you mentioned at, at, towards the end an example of for us to have this earth, for th this earth to be just right, as you say, um, would be mean the same chance of uh, throwing out some grains of sand from an airplane and expecting it to land on the right spot on an soccer plane or football plane or something. I didn't really get what where they were supposed to land. But what you forget is this. How many planets are there in the universe? Not in our solar system, but in the universe. I mean, if you have watched Star Wars, um, little Anakin asks, how many stars are there? And they and um, he's told that there's very many. Is there anyone who has visited them all in the solar system? No. Because that would be impossible in a lifetime. And he's like, I'm going to be the first to visit them all. And we all think he's cute because he doesn't grasp the, the vast number of stars in his solar system. Um, you know, it's a galaxy far, far away. Um, but that's just one galaxy. I mean, I recently watched this video that showed, um, I think it was the Hubble telescope, that, like, stared into the nothingness of one particular part of the sky that appeared dark. You know, if you watch the night sky on a really clear night, you can see that there are stars everywhere, right? But if you find a spot that actually is dark, which is actually hard to find because there's stars everywhere, if you find a spot that is dark and you take a picture of it, and you have to, you know, take a picture for some time because there's almost no light coming through, um, then what you are going to see is a bunch of galaxies. It's, and each of those galaxies has about the same amount of stars and planets and solar systems as in our galaxy. And that, like, that number is so big that I'm not, even, I'm not going to even begin to understand it in my lifetime. It's, you know, so basically... <laughs> There's so many galaxies in the universe. It's ridiculous how many there are. Um, I mean, the number of galaxies are a bigger number than we can grasp. See? So if we take one grain of sand for each planet there is in the universe and throw out from a plane and expect one of those grains of sand landing um, on the right spot. What we're going to do is we're going to drown the Earth in sand because we're going to need more sand than there is on the Earth. So, of course, one of the grains of sand is going to land on the right spot. We just don't know what grain of sand in beforehand. So, um, that's what I see that is are unable to grasp the vastness of the universe and how small the chances are of life in the universe. If there is a chance, 
there is like I mean when you really start to I'm gonna put a link to that video up there. So when you watch that video you start thinking, why haven't we we found life in the universe yet? Because there's got to be more life in the universe. But then um there's not necessarily life very near us. I mean, it takes like forever to get to Pluto. Now, Pluto isn't just one planet orbiting alone out there, recently discovered. It's a bunch of very large grains of sand. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it takes us like forever, <laughs> a human would say, to get there. And for us to get to another solar system, I mean, for us to get to the nearest star outside our solar system, that would take a long time. I'm not sure about the, ex the exact number, but um, that would take a long time. So for us to actually find life, I mean, that would require the life for <laughs> to actually sending out some signals. I mean, we are sending out signals, signals into the space with television and radio and everything. But if if uh, another planet has life, but not intelligent life in our sense, then they might not be sending signals. They like they can be like giraffes, like munching of some tree-like thingies, and they're like, yeah, <laughs> we're up, we're around, but they're not sending us, us some signals. And so for us to find them, we would actually have to go to that planet and see, oh, look, this giraffe is on the, this planet. Okay, I shouldn't have said that particular animal, because I, apparently I can't say that word. But, yeah, so you see the problem of finding life. I mean, they would really, they would have to find us first for us to find them. So, <laughs> and I mean, and then there's this problem of, you know, distances. If there are, like, intelligent life on the other side of the solar system sending out signals, like, here we are, here we are, who are you, hello, and we pick up the, um, those signals, we will be like receiving those signals after their planet has been destroyed because their sun has exploded. So <laughs> you see the problem? The, the chance of life, the, it's, really, it's really not that strange we have life. And if you have the right chemicals and you take lightning on it, you gonna get amino acids and stuff, you know, they made exper experiments. There's not mm, nothing magic about it. Mm. And also, this this thing with, like, if gravity wasn't the way it is and everything, I mean, you're talking about life the way we know it now, right? So, um... I mean, why does everyone keep expecting life to always be carbon-based, for, for one instance? I mean, we have on this Earth life that isn't carbon-based. Google it. I don't know any more than that right now. Because, but I do know that there is life on this Earth that isn't carbon-based. And so why are we only looking for planets with, you know, the right amount of carbon and, yeah. Everything in this universe, in my belief, came together by chance. And actually, there is not any evidence for God. And I watched your videos, your two videos, called Evidence for God, and I was thinking, well, this ought to be interesting. And all I heard was misconceptions of the science. So, what I'm wondering is, does all theists 
or not all, but most of them, um, base their belief on misconception of uh, science. Because that's a depressing thought, isn't it? So if you're going to go around saying there's proof of God and basing it on science, do your homework first. Okay? Bye.